Hi, I'm Troy from Studio 33 Guitar. Thanks for watching. So today I'm going to show you how to play a G chord the right way. Now I'm exaggerating a little bit because really there are different ways that you can play a G chord and sometimes I will play them differently than the way that I'm going to show you now. Depending on the song, sometimes different versions of the G chord are more appropriate or easier. But really, it depends on what chord you're going to next in the song. Because whenever you're playing a song, you really want to make sure that you're taking advantage of common notes. Notes that are the same in one chord and the next chord. So that you can keep that note as you change from one chord to the next, that same note can be used as a pivot point for your hand to adjust to the next chord. So let's zoom in on the neck and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Oftentimes a G chord is taught like this. And that would be with your middle finger on the third fret of the E string, your index finger on the second fret of the A string. The next strings are open down to this highest string here, which you would put your ring finger on the third fret. So that's quite often how a G chord is taught. Now I rarely play a G chord like that. Normally when I play a G chord, I would play it like this. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you've seen that I talk about this quite a bit. Now the first two fingers here stay the same way. The difference is instead of the ring finger being on this highest note, it's the pinky finger. And then we put the ring finger on this note directly above it. And that gives us a G major chord as well. And the other way, it's also a G major chord. Sounds a little bit different, but it's very similar. They're both G major chords. The reason that I normally will play it this way is because you'll notice when you're playing a song that has a G chord in it, there's a very high chance you're probably going to have a D chord in that same song. And a D chord is played like this with your ring finger on that same note that I have it down for in that G chord. So then when you're changing from the G chord to the D chord, that ring finger gets to stay and that becomes your pivot point to switch between one chord and the other. If you're to play that G chord the other way, the first way that I showed you, when you switch to that D chord, now all of your fingers have to reposition to different spots. And that makes it a little bit trickier to make the change and also not as smooth. That's why I usually recommend playing a G chord this way so you can take advantage of that finger being able to stay in that same position. Now, it's also the case when you go to a C chord. Now you could go to a C major chord like this, but often I recommend going to a C add nine chord because that looks exactly the same as a G chord, but you just move your index and middle finger down to the next strings this pinky and ring finger gets to stay again in that same spot. So here's our G chord. If we move these two fingers down, here's our C chord. Now that's a lot easier of a change to go from G to C than G to this C major. And personally, I find that the traditional C major chord is a little bit more of a folksy sound whereas the C add nine is a little bit more of a modern sound. Now there will be some songs where the C major just fits better and sounds better, but for most of the time you can play the C add nine chord whenever the song calls for a C major chord. And again, if you play that G major chord in that first way, in order to get to that C add nine, you would have to move the ring finger and pinky finger again. So by playing the G chord this way, you can make that change without having to move all of your fingers. Now you can also do that if you're moving to an E minor chord. So an E minor can be played like this, and you've maybe seen it like this. It's exactly the same, just different fingers. I like to play an E minor seven chord, and that's with those two fingers there, but then again, the pinky and the ring finger in that same spot that it was for the G and the C add nine. And so that way you can play through these different chords without moving these two fingers. So you have the G, C add nine, 
E minor 7. And then for the D chord, the ring finger gets to stay in that same position. So this is great for a lot of songs because those are the four chords that are used in so many songs. G, D, E minor, and C. So like I said in the beginning, I was kind of exaggerating that this is the best way to play a G major chord. It's not always the best, it depends on what chord is coming up next. But a lot of times if you're playing a G chord, you're going to be playing a D and a C and an E minor. So this really works well for playing those chords together. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you in the next video.